I suppose the matter of size depends on the context. This is the Casio Pocket Size Calculator. Apparently the model name is HS8VA. I wonder if part of the reason why these other calculator brands aren't as popular as Texas Instruments is because their names are just not nearly as catchy. TI-108, TI-84+, TI-30XS, TI-15 Math Explorer, these are not things you forget. But HS8VA, I'm just not sure that that's going to stick in my mind. Anyhow, this is quite the tiny, tiny calculator. I mean, the camera is quite zoomed in right now. You can see that my hand is, is generally just bigger than the, the entire box that contains this calculator. Now, how much free space is in this box is a mystery which we will uncover together. Um, I'm guessing there's not a ton, but maybe a little bit up here. I don't know. I'm sure the thing's pretty thin. It says it has two-way power there on the box if... Uh, the camera will focus here. Two-way power. Now, you know what that means. I don't think it's going to focus. Two-way power. Two-way power means that... Where does it even say two-way power? Where does it say two-way power? Right there. Two-way power. That means it's got solar power and it's got a backup battery. Um, presumably the backup battery is included, but I suppose it's possible that it isn't. Um, the dimensions are here, you know, I don't know if you can see those. Camera might focus, but probably not. It says to be a length of 4 inches, a width of 2.25 inches, and then a height of 0.25 inches. It then also gives the units in centimeters, but I don't understand centimeters, so it doesn't really matter. This is interesting. It says on the side here, there's like a dotted line, and it says to cut here for the quick guide and warranty information. That's interesting. Like, why not just open the calculator? Quick guide, and, and how am I supposed to cut there? Like, if I undo this flap, what is cutting along the flap going to accomplish? Shouldn't, shouldn't I just open the box? Would that not be the most efficient way to, to get into the contents? I'm not sure. You can see the little scissors picture there, so perhaps once we open this up, we'll, we'll do the indicated cutting and, and see what happens. <laughs> Calculator information and support, we can go to https uh, colon slash slash www.casio.com slash us slash calc. Barcode, you can scan that if you want. I'm not going to bother. Uh, sorry, not barcode. That's the barcode. That's the QR code. Now, it's interesting. It says large display, but it's such a tiny calculator. How large could the display possibly be? Well, that's how large, as it says here. This is actual size. Um, now, I see, uh, I see the word minus there, but then I also see like an actual minus symbol. So... I'm guessing that they're not going to use up any any of the like digit slots for a negative. This negative up here is is what will be used to indicate that you've got a negative number. But what does the word minus mean then? Like why would that be here? Because that kind of seems redundant. And then the memory, of course, would tell you if you have a number in memory or whatever. Um, large display, durable metal faceplate. Durable metal faceplate, that's good. Always need a nice rugged calculator, you know, especially if it's going to be tiny and you're going to take it with you everywhere. You need it to be rugged. Markup percent, uh, that's the percent key it's bragging about, right? Yeah, right there. Those are pretty slick um, percent keys, even though they're, you know, they're not super useful if you're mathematically literate. And then it's got the solar plus. I don't know what it means by solar plus, just solar solar cells there with battery backup. All right. Very plain calculator. You know, I just saw this in the Target. I don't know. I was going to get some animal crackers or something. And I was like, I, I got to grab it. I got to grab it. And I got to show you this dinky little calculator. All right. It's so cute. It's been chilling in this box long enough. Let's go ahead and open it up. And maybe I can do it non-barbarically. But I don't have scissors on hand. I will get scissors, but I'm intent on opening this without scissors. Okay. So we'll have to undo the little seal here, and then we should be able to just slide her on out. Man, it's tiny. Look at this guy. Here we go. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look at that. 
It's like a it reminds me of an old McDonald's toy. You know, I think they'd come in a little plastic wrap and there we go. There's our calculator. Um, it definitely is a more rich texture on the actual calculator than what you get on the box. That's pretty nice looking. Look at that guy. Wow. Cool. Got a very flimsy feeling plastic back. Um, but then the, the face plate, the metal face plate, you know, that's good. That's sturdy. That's rugged. Just as, just as the box said, um, there's your slick solar cells model name, two way power. It says, and, um, the on button is the clear and the all clear button, which is not super uncommon, right? That doubles as the on button. There we go. You can't turn it off. You know, it'll turn off automatically once it stops receiving light. It would turn off automatically if it wasn't being actively used. If it didn't have light and you were trying to use it, then it could persist on its backup battery. 1.5 volt battery it says it has here on the back. This is definitely one of the, you know, one of the smaller calculators I've ever had the pleasure of, of holding. Um, it is qu quite tiny, you know, you could, you could flip this guy like a coin and it's got a rugged metal face plate. So, you know, you wouldn't have to worry if, if you were going to flip it like a coin. A lot of times I just use my phone though, if I don't have a coin handy and I need to flip something. Um, but uh, let's do a little bit of math, like a 25 squared. You know, school's starting soon. I gotta practice my number squaring. 25 squared is 625. Now you could just type, right? 25 times 25, bam, bam. There you go, 625, I think that's what I said. Uh, but another cool way you can usually square numbers on these basic calculators, and you can do this with any operation. Say I wanna square 39, right? So 39 squared is gonna be like um, 2,801, I think. And if I just press times equals, oh, I was totally wrong. <laughs> if I just press times equals, I got to practice. If I just press times equals, it will square it. Maybe it did some mystical operation and that wasn't actually squaring. Let's try again. Five times equals 25. See? So if you just press equals, it will perform the operation on the number itself that's being displayed. So if we do like six plus equals, you get 12. And you can actually keep pressing equals to repeat. This is just how four function calculators typically work, uh, which is pretty slick. So I've never used this one before, but I know the controls. Appreciate also the presence of a square root button here. Um, you know, that's pretty nice. That's not super common on some of the old smaller calculators, um, but you have to use it on a number that's in the display, right? So if I wanna take the square root of nine, um, I can press the square root button. If I press 81 square root, it'll give me the square root, it'll give me nine. Obviously you're not gonna type square root and then type the number you want the root of. You just perform an operation um, on whatever's in the display. And this has an eight digit display, which is pretty typical. We can turn a positive number to a negative with the plus minus button. And okay, so that answers my question I had before. If we have a negative, not only does it give us the negative symbol in the top, but it also just says minus. That seems, I don't know, that's interesting design. I've never seen that. If we do five minus eight, you can see that because we now have a negative number, both the negative symbol and the word minus pop up in the top corner, which is interesting. Why would they not just pick one or the other? I don't know, I guess I'm sure they had a long conversation about this. 78 minus 100, you get 22 with the minus up front. I've never actually used a calculator that displays negatives in this way, at least not, not one that made an impression on me, so that's kind of cool. Now, the way the percent key works, honestly, I can hardly remember because I've used calculators like this so little. But if we do, if I type 52 and then percent, nothing's going to happen. What if I type equals? What if I do um, 5 percent and then 100 nope that doesn't do anything 100 percent five uh five percent times 100 500 oh okay okay so if i do if i do say 200 times five percent i'm gonna get five percent 
of 200, right? You'll get 10. Yeah, I'm starting to remember how this works. So you could also do like 100 plus, you could say 25%. That's going to add 25% of the number. So you get 125. If you wanted, you know, this is good for tipping, right? You keep this guy in your pocket and you get like a 25 22 bill for a nice plate of breakfast and you want to tip 15 percent plus 15 press your percent key i keep losing track of it and there you go there's your tip about 29 dollars uh is the the bill total plus the tip of 15 percent it's pretty slick obviously you could do the same thing with minus as well now in the light, I can see that the error prompt is in the top right of the calculator. You can't really see that on the camera probably. But if we do five divided by zero, we should be able to see the error pop up there in the top right. Or let's go ahead and take the square root of a negative. So if I do five and press the minus button, now it's a negative. Now I can take a square root. And, oh, that's funny. We get the uh, positive root, but we also get the error message. That's pretty interesting. Um, if you're not familiar with the memory keys, that's a great feature to help get around the limitations of these smaller calculators. Um, by default, there is uh, the number zeros in the memory. So if I have like 12 in my display, I can press memory recall, the MRC key, and recall zero to the display. If I wanna start storing numbers in the memory, I could say 12 and then M plus. That's gonna add it to whatever is in the memory. So now, you know, let me get 25 on the display. If I recall the memory now, it's gonna be 12. That's in the memory. And I could keep recalling it as much as I want. I could do 25 plus memory recall is 12 and I'll get 37. So I can store something in the memory, then I can use it in my operation. Of course, you can subtract something from the memory too. I could do five M minus, that's gonna subtract five from the memory and i think something got screwed up there let, let me do it again i must have lost track of the keys i was pressing i add 12 to the memory and then notice that when i press the clear key that clears the display if i press it again it's going to do an all clear and then this word memory would disappear the word memory is there right now to indicate that i have a non-zero number stored in the memory if i press the clear again that memory is going to go away or maybe not huh that's weird i guess uh if, if you double tap the mrc key that will do it so i can press it once to recall the memory press it again to clear the memory let me add 12 back in and then if i press 5 m plus that's going to add 5 to the 12 in memory and now 17 shows up pretty neat and actually i just noticed this m u uh, key. I have no idea what that does. So we could experiment to try to figure out what the MU key is. Um, but let's go ahead and grab a pair of scissors and cut along this line like the box tells us and see if that gives us some insight. So the idea here is we want to um, be able to unfold the box. So I just want to cut along this seam so we can unfold the box and then then we can access the instructions on how to use the calculator and that'll tell us what that MU does. So, so the buttons on the calculator I'll just say suck. I, the buttons feel terrible. Um, that's gonna be I guess an expected trade-off you know. N honestly not a lot of calculators have great buttons. That's kind of an unusual feature. I think the TI-84 Plus is an example of a calculator with really good feeling buttons. Um, but if you're going to try to go for a really tiny calculator, crappy buttons is just something you're probably going to have to deal with. And, uh, here we go. Here are our instructions inside the box. This is like as exciting as the back of a cereal box. So let's read through these and see if we can figure out what MU does. Okay. So looking at this box has answered a lot of questions for me. Meaning of life, the entire point of human morality and why we would have constructed it in the first place, as well as the existence or lack thereof of intelligent life forms outside of Earth and the Milky Way galaxy more broadly. Uh, but more importantly, uh, if we want to clean the calculator, we can wipe it with a soft, dry cloth. 
It also, uh, we also have the answer now to the auto power off question. It's going to be about eight minutes after the last key operation. The calculator will automatically power off. Um, and then, yeah, blah, 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 blah. So the rest of the questions about the, the keys, the crappy keys, also answered. So here's the skinny. Uh, first, the clear and, and all clear button. I remember what that does now, especially after looking at the instructions on the box. Um, for example, if I want to add, like, say I want to add 2 to 5. So I press 5 plus, but then I accidentally press 3. I can press clear to get rid of the 3 and be allowed to correct my operation input. So now I can press the 2 that I intended, and then I get 7. If I press the clear button twice in that same example, you know, 5 plus 3... I press clear once, the three's gone, but the five is still there, waiting for something to be added to it. That's not the case, though, if I press the clear again. You know the five's still here, because if we press equals, boom, there's the five. But if we press five plus three, clear, clear again, no more five. Finally, as for the MU key, this is actually a markup key. So um, the numerical example that the instructions give is 120, mark up 25%. So what this is going to give us is the number that 125 is 75% of. So it's like we, you know, like we bought something for $125 and we marked it up um, such that the purchase price or let's phrase that differently, such that the profit is 25% of the total, right? So buy something for 120. If we mark it up to 160, then the profit would be 25%. So that's how that key works. Pretty handy. Just a couple more things uh, before we wrap up this thorough look. How do we clear the memory? Oh yeah, I just wanna MRC. I wanna clear that darn memory. Um, here's what the calculator looks like. Um, next to what might be my biggest calculator that I own, which can barely fit in the frame, we can maybe zoom out a little bit for some more perspective. Um, it was my scissors. So uh, yeah, it's pr it is pretty darn dinky. I mean, look at that. It's practically the size of the number pad um, of this crappy calculator. So pretty darn dinky thing. And there's an ultra close up for those of you that are, you know, really into these calculators. I suppose there's one order of business left as this is the HS8VA pocket, pocket size calculator. I mean, there's a lot to being pocket sized. For one, you've got to be able to fit in a pocket. This naturally, you know, we don't need to run any super thorough experimentation. I am confident this will fit in my pockets. What's really important is, will it stay in the pocket, right? You're not going to put it in the pocket unless you intend to go somewhere with this pocketed inside of your pocket. But will it stay in the pocket when you're moving around? You know, it's, I mean, it doesn't really matter if it's pocket size, if it's just gonna jump from your pocket because maybe it has some, you know, slippery shape or maybe it's just barely pocket size and it will hang out and, and fall out. You know, who knows what, what sort of tragedy could unfold if we were to actually put this in our pocket. But I will not let you tread blindly into such dark things. I will take this myself. I'll put it in my pocket. I'll go for a jog and uh, I'll see if it stays in my pocket or not. All right, just got back from a quick jog. Let me check my pockets, see if the calculator fell out. Sorry, let me check the other pocket. So I guess it fell out. So, Verdict is, uh, Casio HS8VA sucks, get a real calculator like the TI-108.